Shut up and sit down. Hello YouTube, I am the Cyber Roof Guru. Uh, welcome to my channel, thank you for watching. Uh, this is uh, a follow-up from my uh, CAM CAD 101 video. I'm going to show you in Fusion uh, how to do some of the, the tool paths uh, and create some of the features. Um, so we'll just get right to it. So uh, cutting over to Fusion here, you can see I've already created uh, kind of what I'll call the stock wood um, with the letter S, which you saw in the previous video, which I will link. Uh, to this video and I have already extruded um, the S here uh, but I'm going to show you how I did it uh, by redoing it with some other letters so we're going to double click on the sketch here you can see when it goes into the sketch mode uh, this letter uh, it's all um, uh, pixelated or anti-aliased uh, I, I don't know why Fusion does this with the letters um, but it does so um, we'll just uh, keep that in mind so we're going to insert here some more text uh, where did it go? Text. Uh, select a little box here and move this onto the screen so you all can see it. Put it right about. Okay, so um, there's lots of different fonts you can choose from. The different fonts. Uh, in uh, some fonts you can bold, some fonts you can't. Um, in this case, we'll, we'll bold it out. We'll make it a little bit smaller here so it fits, um, just for the sake of the video here. <coughs> um, and we will use. Uh, this font actually, um, so what I did here is I did a pocket, or I did it, in this case I extruded it downwards, which we will create a pocket for. In this case we'll use this for some uh, V carving. So uh, we'll stop the sketch. And you can see, um, and again, I don't know why, you saw how blurry the other font was. We'll go back in the sketch, you see how blurry this S was, and this is not. Um, I, I imagine that's because maybe one's true type and one's not. I, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, we'll turn the sketch back on and you can see this here. So um, you do not have to extrude this text uh, for uh, engraving. But if you do, when you go into the simulation, you can actually see it. So we're just going to extrude it a little bit. The depth of the extrusion for the V carving or engraving in Fusion is really immaterial to the actual <laughs> uh, depth. Uh, so we'll select this guy, we will say uh, a negative, you know, where did it go, we can just do this, a negative 125, one, uh, and there you go. So now if we turn off the sketch, you can see you kind of have your extrusion here. Um, and so with uh, CNC, the, the, <coughs> the cut angles here, you can't really do super tight cornered areas like this with CNC because you can only route out the, the, the the dimensions or the diameter of the bit itself so um, if you have a really really small bit you can get close but you can't make a right hand corner like this like you can with v-carving um, okay so we're going to switch over to cam here um, first thing you want to do is we're going to create a setup um, in this case um, I'm not going to make a huge deal about setting it up. I uh, just want to show you some things that I do real quickly. So generally base it off the model orientation. I set the stock here in this case. Um, I, whoops, I usually use a relative size box with no additional stock. Um, and then I'll move the, the, the start point for, if I need to. Um, go back to setup. I want to say the um, origin here is going to be uh, the model origin, um, which is right there. Um, so this is important for me. I don't like starting in the middle. A lot of professional CAD um, uh, CAM people start in the middle. In this case, I like to zero it out on the corner. Um, and you can see it's important with the setup. Let me go back in there, sorry. Um, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to create a new, yes, a new setup. Um, these, um, the axes are important, um, X, Y, and Z. This is the, you need to know what your, your CNC or your milling axes are, what they call a work coordinate system, um, so that your machine will move in the right direction. You can swap these around um, so that X or Y are backwards or Z. Uh, you gotta be very cognizant of this because if you get it wrong, then your machine will not uh, do what you want it to do. All right, so right off the bat, I'm gonna start with a pocket. Uh, you can see here there's two different types of pockets here there's an adaptive clearing and a, and a regular 2d pocket for our purposes uh, we're just going to do a 2d uh, there's lots of settings in fusion uh, this is not a fusion tutorial um, uh, so uh, we'll just leave it at that so in this case i'm going to select a quarter inch uh, two flute uh, i'm sorry an eighth inch two flute uh, end mill this is uh, my personal library i set these up so um, and they're already uh, defaulted to what I need. So the next thing you want to do is just go in here and select your your 
um, what is known as your geometry. In this case, you want to select the bottom uh, of the um, part, um, and that'll set your depth automatically. Next, you want to set your depth. Pretty much all of this stuff is stock. Uh, you can leave it stock if you want. I generally don't. I tweak it, but for the brevity here, we'll just leave it the same. So the key the key um, values you want to worry about here: are your stock top and your stock and your your or your top height and your bottom height. In this case, we're going to set the top height to the stock top, uh, which is the, the top of the actual stock. Um, and the bottom height is the is the height of the, the contour. Uh, you can choose to make it the, if you want don't want it to be the contour depth, you can uh, do uh, stock top and then say negative, negative 0.135, for example. Um, so that will cut down um, 0.135 um, inches down into the wood. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, that's pretty simple, and I'll show you. Um, if you have a piece of wood, like this cherry here, um, this cherry, if you measure it with, a, with, a, with your handy dandy um, calipers, um, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it's uh, 1.133. Uh, five in this case, so it is not 0.125, even though I even though I bought an eighth inch thick of cherry. So you always want to measure your materials, make sure you know what it is. So uh, from this case, if you were to make it 0.125, you would have about a tenth of an inch sticking out off the top once you push the inlay down. Um, that's fine. You can sand it down. It's extra work. Um, what you don't really want to do is make it too deep um, because then the cherry will, or the wood will sink down in, and then that would be bad. Um, so just some examples there. So you can see what it did is automatically computed the um, the cutting uh, and the pocketing. You can see these lines are uh, where the machine's going to cut, and the the red here is actually where it's uh, going to go down into the material. Now in this case, this I, I chose to just leave it as cutting um, uh, one single depth at one time. Um, which is not probably what you'd want to do. You want to do multiple depths, um, take your time so you don't have any tear out and you don't break the bit. Um, but for the sake of this video, it's, uh, that's creating the pocket right there. Um, so now, um, what would you do if you now wanted to do the inlay part? Um, so that's very simple. You go into um, the 2D cutting operations and you create a, um, <clears throat> a two, what they call 2D contour or profile. Um, you select the same exact uh, edge. You can select the bottom or the top. It doesn't really matter. Um, and oops, I forgot to select my tool. Um, it defaults to the same tool. In this case, we'll do a quarter inch or an eighth inch flat end mill, um, which I think is the same one we had there uh, in the previous one. Then we have our geometry set. Um, you can set your heights. And again, if you select uh, the bottom of the, the edge here instead of the top, uh, you can just leave it a selected contour if that is the thickness of your wood. Um, in this case, we know that our wood is bigger, so we'll do stock top um, minus 0.135. Uh, 135. Um, so there will be a little bit of material you'll have to shave off, um, two hundredths of an inch, um, but it should be seated nicely in there. And again, you'd want to adjust your passes here and do a roughing pass and whatnot, and, but it's fine. So now, what do you see here? Um, so now, uh, ha! So we selected the profile, and it is going to do a profile, but this is an inside profile, which is not what we want um, for a um, for the inlay. We want the wood to go to be exactly the same diameter here. And if we do an inside profile, um, the diameter is actually I'll show it to you. We'll, we'll simulate this guy, um, turn our stock on, um, and play it. Um, let me zoom out a little bit here so you can see what's going on. Um, so it's going to create the inside profile here so that the outside edge of the bit will be the exact diameter you're looking for. Um, however, if I were to now make this transparent, what you see is um, this is the wood that's left right here and this is the cutout. That's not what we want. We want the wood left to be on the outside. So we'll close this guy down, we'll edit it. Um, it's super simple to change. Um, if we go back over here to geometry. See this little red arrow? Um, this red arrow says uh, cut on the inside. If we flip it, we tell it to cut on the outside. We click OK. And so now, um, uh, I'm not sure why it's showing up. Um, oh, because of the, the, yeah, because of the depth. Um, turn the body off. You can see that it's on the outside. And if we were to simulate it again, um, turn our stock on, make it transparent, and press play, um, you can see what it's doing is it's routing around the edge like this, just like what you wanted. 
Um, now I'll I want to point out some stuff about what it's doing here because uh, it's really important. <laughs> um, all right, so now that it's done simulating, look what it did right here. Um, it routed it out, so the wood you end up with is going to be the stuff effectively that's in the green, but the pocket is going to have this little hook. Um, so this will not work when you go to put it together. Um, this uh, piece will be, uh, there will actually be wood there and you will not be able to um, push it down um, because the, the, the wood will hit the pocket. Um, so in this case you have a couple of options. You can edit this S so it doesn't have this sharp corner um, or you can use a smaller bit and get as close as you can. You'll also see down here, same thing here, right? Uh, so I'm not entirely sure. Um, I know what I did. I smoothed the S yeah, in a, and I, I pulled it into uh, Inkscape and I smoothed it in Inkscape. So uh, that's an important lesson learned for pocketing right there. Um, so next. Uh, we're going to show engraving, so if you select an engrave, um, in this case, we want to select our tool. And, uh, Fusion Smart and automatically chooses the tools that will work for engraving, so in this case, we're going to use a half inch, 60 degree V-bit. Um, you can, let me slide the tool thing over here, it's off the screen, you can see it shows you that when you select the different uh, bits what they look like. Um, we're just going to use 60, it's fine. Um, Geometry, we want to uh, select. Uh, this is a, a, um, an area where uh, turning the sketch on actually will help you um, and turning the body off will help because now you can just select all the text at once. Um, if you didn't do this, you would have to select each one of the, the, the individual lines and chains. It's just a, it's just a pain. Um, same thing here. Now it automatically computes this, this depth here. Um, it's not going to cut 0.14 inches deep. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, what that depth is, uh, how they compute it. So I, I got to dig into that again. I've only done this a few times. Um, click OK. Uh, and what you can see is here it created the tool pass. Um, and if I'll do from the top here to show you. So it's, it's following the center profile using the bit and it's varying the Z height. Um, and if we show it here from the side, um, you can see from the Z perspective, this is what it's doing. So it's moving the Z up and down and having this edge follow the profile. Um, so that's very super cool, right? So let's turn this on, turn that off. We'll go into our simulate here and we will show it to you. I'm going to take the transparent off because it's easier to see when it plays. Um, so there you go. You can see what it's doing, how it's moving the, the Z up and down um, as it's kind of routing it out. Um, and the beauty of this is you can see uh, how you can get some nice sharp edges. Uh, see how you actually get those points, whereas in the previous example using the, the router bit, um, you're only going to get at the angle of the diameter of the router bit. So there you go. Um, and if you go into statistics here, it tells you it'll take a minute and seven seconds to cut this out. I found the, 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 um, uh, the, the estimated times, machining times from Fusion to be pretty darn accurate within a few seconds. Um, all right, so uh, last thing I'll show you is just a profile. If you wanted to uh, cut a profile out for some reason, um, it's the same sort of operation uh, you do here. Um, <coughs> contour, uh, geometry, um, there you go. And now in this case, one thing to note um, under uh, this, you, you want to do conventional milling uh, when you do something on the outside like this. I found um, for the shape Oko, uh, the, the um, climb milling is best for the pocketing and the routing. Um, for the outside profiles, you want to use conventional milling so it's not uh, pulling the, the wood as much. Um, and again, you can simulate that if you choose. Um, one of the beauties of Fusion, right? Um, we'll play it. Um, and you can see it's not really. Uh, oops, we chose. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> interesting stop. Uh, so, this is another reason why you want to uh, simulate. Uh, we did not change our uh, bit uh, when we did the contour. It remembers the last bit. You do not want to do uh, profiles with <laughs> a V carving bit. Um, in this case, let's do. Um, probably want to do a quarter inch. Where's my quarter inch uh, flat end mill? I don't want four flutes, I want two flutes. There you go. 
um, and you also want to set your uh, depth here not at the selected contour in this case you want to do it to stock bottom if you set all that up right and now if we were to uh, simulate it turn the stock on you would see it's going to go all the way down and cut it all the way around. Again, you don't want to cut it all at once um, unless you have a professional machine that can handle the torque. You, um, shape boats, <coughs> shape boat girls certainly can't do that. All right, so um, this is probably longer than I wanted it to, but it's kind of a great little introduction on how to do some basic cam operations in Fusion. Um, if you have any questions, as always, please leave them below. Um, uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon.